Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn a new topic on chapter 6, Chemical Equilibrium, specifically for the first subtopic, Dynamic Equilibrium. According to the name of this topic, Chemical Equilibrium, it is a condition in the course of reversible chemical reactions in which no need change in the amounts of reactants and products happened. So not all reactions happening in this world capable to achieve this equilibrium means there should be more than one type of reactions you need to know. Just an important reminder, for any chemical reactions, reactants will always be on the left hand side while the product gonna be on the right hand side. So there will be two types of chemical reactions. One is called irreversible, another one is called reversible. What's the difference between these two? Let's look at their definitions. Irreversible means reactions cannot be reversed. In other words, they can only proceed in one direction, from reactant to become product. While for reversible reactions, one in which the product, as soon as they are formed, they will react again to produce original reactants. So the reactions can happen both forward from reactant to become product and reverse from product to become reactant. So how these two chemical reactions can be differentiated? By looking at their arrow. Irreversible reactions got single directions arrow, while reversible reactions got double directions arrow. There are three states needed to be obeyed by a reaction in order for them to be said in a state of dynamic equilibrium. In terms of concentrations, the reactant concentrations and product concentrations will stop changing. In other words, they will remain unchanged over the time. This means the rate of reactions for both forward and reverse reactions will be equal. No net change, they are happening at the same time. As for the final factor, which is the reaction's quotient, it is basically conditions applied. Let's say partial pressure of gases, and then their relationship will somehow form a constant suggested by the second factor in here. Having rate is the same for both reactions, forward and reverse. So both Q and K is actually a constant, but Q is a constant at non-equilibrium conditions, while K is a constant at equilibrium conditions. You get to know which one is Q and K based on the information given in the questions. We're going to do a bit of maths in subtopic number 2 to cover these part reactions quotients. Just to remind you, even though we have already learned stoichiometry in chapter 1 to discuss the limiting reactant and also how much product to expect, but those were for irreversible reactions, the single direction reactions, where we assume all the reactants will be used up to form products, and then the reaction is over. But with equilibria, it will be more complicated if we were to calculate each concentration of the substance at equilibrium. So we're going to treat reversible reactions differently from the one we have learned in chapter 1. We're going to use specific example of N2O4 to become 2NO2 to see how the dynamic equilibrium conditions we have discussed in previous slide are achieved by looking at the shape of the graph for concentrations against time. Note that both sides of chemical reactions got nitrogen and oxygen, but then their coefficient differs. On the left hand side, we have one mole. On the right hand side, we have two mole. So these coefficients has something to do with the shape of the graph. From the chemical reactions, we could see the reversible arrow here indicates reactions is said to achieve dynamic equilibrium. But we still need to check on the other two conditions. Say that this reaction is moving forward from N2O4 to become NO2, this N2O4 will be consumed, means their concentrations here decreases. And as its coefficient is only 1, so shallow slope is expected. As for concentrations NO2 that will be formed, the graph showed increasing curve and it increases 2 times due to coefficients 2 in here. So steeper slope is expected if you compare to N2O4. At particular time, let's say we define it as T1, at T1, their rate will be equal. So will be equal here means the forward and reverse reactions occurring at the same time. As stated in the second factor of dynamic equilibrium, so we must expect they no longer showing curve, instead they will be having a zero gradient of the graph, as in no change in concentrations over time starting from this point, T1. So this point indicates the concentrations of both NO2 and N2O4 will remain unchanged 
but this could happen as long as there is no external factors like increasing pressure is applied. As suggested in the graph before, the concentrations of species is not necessarily equal though the rate is equal, so their gradient do not land on exactly one point. But since rate here means difference in concentrations over difference in time, so rate against time graph will reach only one point for both forward and reverse reactions as suggested by dynamic equilibrium where their rate is equal. So take note on your y-axis whether they are concentrations or rate. Given a reversible reactions of nitrogen oxide to react with oxygen gas to form nitrogen dioxide gas. Since the chemical equations uses reversible arrow, means these reactions has achieved dynamic equilibrium. Law of mass of action states that for a reversible reactions at equilibrium and a constant temperature, a certain ratio of reactants and product concentrations or sometimes it can also be pressure, it depends on the information given in the questions, got constant value of K, which is the equilibrium constant. So for these reactions, we could write an expression represent equilibrium constants in two variables. One is concentrations. So we have equilibrium constants in terms of concentrations, that's why this is called Kc, equal to the concentrations of products, so our product now is NO2, so put a bracket in here indicates concentrations together with the specific species NO2. And then raised to the power of 2, this power of 2 comes from the coefficients from the balance equations. So this can be divided with concentrations of reactant. In our case, we have NO and also O2. NO put a square bracket together with the power of 2 comes from the coefficients 2 and then concentrations of O2 with coefficients of 1. So that is for Kc. Note that the concentration should be in molar or mole per liter. And then for the second variable, it can also be represented in terms of partial pressure because sometimes the questions will give you information about the partial pressure. So for the equilibrium constant at partial pressure, we're going to substitute instead of having this square bracket, we're going to have this P as the partial pressure with respect to gases. So we have NO2 here, the partial pressure of NO2 raised to the power of 2, just the same one as in the concentrations, but then how do you denote partial pressure and concentration differs? As for the unit for partial pressure, make sure they are all in ATM. Phases to be included in these expressions is just gas phase. Solid and liquid won't be part of this expression as they already got their own constant. Let's say we start the reactions with NO2 on the right hand side, means reverse reactions will be favored from the right to the left. So we have an amount of NO2 to start with. As you can see from the curve, it will start up here, means they got something. And then for zero amount of N2O4, that's why the curve starts from down here. Since the coefficients is different from one another, so their decrement or increment will vary. As time goes by, concentrations of NO2 will decrease as they are being consumed, so we must expect they decreases two times much lower concentrations. This is due to the coefficient too. And as for N2O4 that will be formed, the graph is showing increasing curve, but they only increases one time due to this coefficient 1, so slightly higher in positions than NO2. Note that both concentrations of NO2 and N2O4 will intersect at one point even though they both start from different concentrations. This is due to the species starts with greater amount. And then at particular time, say T1, their rate of reactions will be equal. So therefore, zero gradient of the graph. So this zero gradient do not indicate the reactions will stop. Instead, the reactions quotient, the Q, is equal to the equilibrium constant K. So starting from this point, the concentrations for both species, NO2 and N2O4, will remain unchanged. If we start the reactions with N2O4, means we are going to have an amount of N2O4 to start with. That's why we have the graph starts from up here. And then for NO2, there is none of them available at the moment. That's why the graph starts from below. And then from left to right indicates forward reactions is favored. So N2O4 will be consumed. So concentrations decreases and only shallow state is formed due to coefficient 1 of N2O4. 
and then for NO2 to be formed, the concentrations will increase. This time it will increase two times due to coefficients two, and steeper slope can be seen. There is no point of intersections between these two concentrations due to the species that we're going to start with got less amount on of it. At particular time T1, their rate of reactions will be equal. Again, zero gradient of the graph suggests the reaction's quotient Q is equal to the equilibrium constant K. And starting from this point T1, the concentrations for both species NO2 and also N2O4 will remain constant. Another case is when reaction starts with both N2O4 and NO2 at the same time. So reactions will favor species that got greater amount. So between these two species, NO2 got two mole. Therefore, reverse reactions is favored from the right to the left. Both species will have the same concentrations to start with. So NO2 in here will be consumed two times while N2O4 will be formed one times. So no point of intersections could be seen as they both start from the same amount of substance, but then one is decreasing, another one is increasing. At particular time T1, their rate of reactions will be equal when the concentration for both species remain unchanged. That's all for subtopic number one dynamic equilibrium. Thank you.